Are you looking for an athletic scholarship? You're in the right place. This is the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Podcast, the longest running podcast on recruiting and athletic scholarships. We're here to help your family navigate the recruiting road all the way to an athletic scholarship. He's a recruiting expert and a dad of two college athletes. He has a wealth of experience to share. Here's Recruit Me CEO, Brent Hanks. Welcome to episode 312 of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. My name is Brent Hanks, and I'm the owner and CEO of Recruit Me. I'm again excited about this episode. It is part two of an interview with Aaron Womack Jr. Aaron is the father of five kids and one going through the recruiting process now in basketball. In last week's episode, episode 311, Aaron and I dove into Aaron's recruitment just a few years ago to his junior college and then to then Southwest Missouri State, now Missouri State. Aaron is a retired high school and college educator and administrator and coach and is now the owner of An Hour Early LLC. Under An Hour Early LLC, Aaron is a motivational speaker, an entrepreneurial coach, a student and teacher coach, a podcaster, and an author. I invite you to visit anhourearlyllc.com and listen to Aaron's An Hour Early podcast, especially episode 57, featuring me and Recruit Me. Like last week's episode, this week's episode is a little longer than normal, closer to 30 minutes instead of the normal 15 minutes. Both episodes, episodes 311 and 312, are filled with recruiting advice and life advice that will have you ready to run through a wall after hearing Aaron's passion and honesty in giving advice and telling you about his life experiences. Before we get started, I wanted to invite you to click on the new Recruit Me newsletter sign-up link in the show notes. The first Recruit Me newsletter will be sent out the first week of August 2022 and will be sent to you monthly the first week of each month. There will be recruiting tips and advice from the Recruit Me 3.0 Athletic Scholarship System. Tips and advice from social media that I find from coaches and other experts. Quotes from past episodes of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. And links to helpful recruiting resources. Here is a quote that will be in the first edition of the Recruit Me newsletter in August. This quote is from Missouri State's head coach of men's golf, Neil Stafford. Quote, you know, it never hurts to get your name and information out in front of a coach. But you know, we're out there recruiting mostly during the summer months. But we also field hundreds of emails we're receiving. 750 to 1,000 inquiries per class. It never hurts just to get your information out there as early as possible, unquote. So check out the show notes and sign up now. Let's jump into part two of the interview with Aaron A-Train Womack Jr. Let's, let's jump over to uh, what, you, what you're doing now, Aaron. Uh, you've got, the, I mentioned the uh, an hour early uh, podcast earlier, and you've got an hour early LLC. So what all's involved in your uh, your entrepreneurial business? Well, you know, just uh, like I said, been in education over 27 years. Uh, I found that, with, and I'm t- taught in a public school, Milwaukee Public Schools, and I'm taught that no matter how much math I'm supposed to teach, how much math I know, that it doesn't matter if the kids are not motivated. And so I find myself doing motivational things first before I can teach them about algorithms and, and equations and things like that. And then started just tell my story about how I really didn't learn to work hard until later on in life. And then once I found that, it just kind of pushed myself. Even after being recruiting, coming to Missouri State, I, I thought I was it. Hey, I'm at the mountaintop. I'm good. Uh, you know, but I, I need to work even more because then I ran into a Kelby Stuckey and a Hubert Henderson and a Lee Campbell and a Caleb Davis. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Wow. So it just turned into me motivate my students. And then I was invited to come give some speeches to different places. And then I it kind of fell in love with motivating people and especially on the on the student end. So it turned into me just going to different churches and and, and, and giving speeches and, and, and everything. So I said, well, I would like to expand on this. So just explored it, start writing some books and, and everything. And then the podcast came about as another way to get the voice out, uh, to get into the entrepreneur uh, mindset from, from a standpoint of, I want to motivate kids because there's some kids who are not doing so well. Uh, the report card, education report card in Milwaukee Public Schools uh, is not where it should be. And, I, and for me, uh, everyone is trying to attack the curriculum side of it and, and teach and teach teachers how to teach better. But my thing is that when I speak, they're not motivated. They don't have the big dreams. They don't have the things that want to push them because they don't see the forest with the trees. You can't tell a kid, yeah, get out and go run five miles at 6 a.m. 
when they're sixth, seventh, eighth grade because they don't see on down the road. Or you can't say, hey, go to this math camp. So I had to do some things motivational wise and teach them how to write a plan and come up with a, a, a things that you need to do daily. So that's how I kind of turned in. There was a need for it. And so I uh, just like with your with your with your 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 company and podcast, there's a need for it. And so when you when you get into the service mindset, it leads you to do certain things. So that's why I am. Uh, I, 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 I teach educators on how to motivate kids and did not teach kids uh, about dreaming big, writing a plan. A lot of times you say to a kid, what are your dreams? Uh, I want to go to the NFL. I said, well, what are your plans? They said, go to the NFL. I said, well, those two different things. The plan is what you do step by step daily to get to having your dreams fulfilled. So uh, we write lesson plans for kids so that when a kid's not doing what they're supposed to do, I said, pull out your lesson book. Now, did you plan to skip class today? Did you plan to not get your homework done? Let's go according to your plan. So that's how I got kind of, kind of involved in that. Well, and uh, what are the name of your two published books, Aaron? Uh, yeah, the first book uh, is Birth in a Dream from the concept that um, if you, whatever dreams that you have, you got to give birth to it. You know, you got to get like almost become impregnated with it. It's uh, when a woman's with child, she can't say, well, I'm in my second trimester. I'm tired. Let me leave the child home. No, she's with that child. When you have a dream, that dream has to be with you daily. And then after a certain point, now that's that dream need to be with you daily, but you need to work so hard that other people see your dream in you. Uh, like I said before, um, I don't I don't ever discourage kids from their dreams, but I will talk about your work ethic. I can say it's nothing wrong with dreaming about the NFL, but I, you don't have an NFL work ethic because I don't see it. You know, if you've been in the weight room for three years and I don't see no difference in it, come on now. Or, well, you know, if you're working on your son's fastball and it was at 60 miles an hour and after a couple of years, it's still at 60, well, we need to put some work in. So that's what that concept. And then uh, that was my first book. So it's not my best book, but my the second book called Faith Without Hustle is Dead. And it's a way better book. It's an in- interactive book from a standpoint after each chapter. You write down the notes that you just got out of that first chapter. And it's a, it's a book trying to get you to move, to get you motivated, to get you going to that next level. Whatever it is your dreams are, you have to put pen to paper. You have to look at it daily. You have to see it. You have to grind on. You have to become that that dream. And it's all about putting in that work uh, so that you can get to where you want to get to. You mentioned uh, being motivated in, in classes and how you kind of got started. I can remember my first day of college algebra and I, <laughs> and I walked in and in college algebra, it's all seniors and freshmen. Yes, and yes. The seniors yes. put it off or have failed it, and they're taking it for the third time. Yeah, the freshmen yes. are trying to get through it. So this guy's over by the. This is how old we are. The guy's over by the window smoking in the classroom, <laughs> and he says, "Why do we do? Why do we do algebra?" And everybody, you know, everybody's nobody knows. And uh, he says, "So you can solve problems in a logical order." And I'm like, "Okay, so for all my high school, either nobody told me that." or I didn't pay attention when somebody told me that I wanted to coach. I didn't, I thought X and <laughs> X's and O's was all I needed. So, you know, you, what, what you said earlier right, right. is there, there's a reason why you're doing this stuff and, and uh, you've got to find a way to, to get kids motivated and tell them how they're going to use it in the, in the future, whether it's school, whether it's recruiting, whether it's college, whether it's work, whether it's family yeah. life. Like you said, you, you've hit, hit a great yeah. subject that, that motivates people. If you go to your website, what else can they, can they uh, learn from you? Well, you also go get on there that, you know, I do uh, for my podcast and then extend it to words that won't make. It's just a uh, 60 seconds or less of uh, just a quick little entrepreneur jab or just kind of like motivational jab to, to, to get you pushed forward. For instance, we just talked about last week that in order to get to your, your next level is that you got to stop making sacrifices. Now, I, sound, I know it sounds like an oxymoron because we all talk about sacrifices. However, if your wife is sick and you're tired, you came in from a maybe a long road trip because you went to see your son's play and your wife is sick, wouldn't you take care of your wife? Wouldn't you go get her some chicken soup and things like that? You wouldn't call that a sacrifice. No, because that's what you, that's a responsibility. That's what you're supposed to do. When you, when you contact these other schools on behalf of your son, oh, that's a sacrifice. No, that's a responsibility. So in order to get to the next level, quit thinking about sacrifices. It's your responsibility. So like when I was writing my book and I'm, I'm waking at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, because an idea hits me. Oh, I made a sacrifice to get up and write notes. No, if I'm going to be an author, I have to write. That's a responsibility. So it, when you think of sacrifices, you can, can tell your brain that I really don't have to do it because I did enough sacrifices. No, you need to do it. You need to put that work, weight room work in. You need to look at them. Your sons know, you know, uh, one going to college, one just finished at a four year school at Northwestern. When it comes to uh, doing ex work or going uh, to the academic table and to the, the food table and then do different things as, as a group, 
I did, he can't say, well, I made enough sacrifices. I was up at six o'clock in the morning. No, it's a responsibility. So to get to the next level, quit thinking about his sacrifice. It's a responsibility. Because it's not just a responsibility to yourself. It's a responsibility to your, to your teammates. And, exactly. Uh, and, right, exactly. exactly. So, so you're not just playing for yourself. Uh, and I've always told my kids, I said, play for yourself first. Play for your team second. You don't. You're not playing for me. You know. You're not really right. even playing for your coaches. You're playing for that bond that you have with yourself and 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 with the teammates. So yes, it, it's it, it's so funny as you as you got to talking the, the way you the way you explained that your uh, your pace sped up and uh, you got excited <laughs> and that's that that that's uh, that's what you need to be motivated. You need somebody yes, to be sir. excited about about stuff. Yes, so sir. tell us how your entrepreneurial stuff and recruiting, how, how they're kind of meshed a little bit. Yeah. So the, the thing is, you know, if you need help, uh, you know, uh, within your classroom or individual about, you know, the little, the motivation spark and basically to, to get yourself organized to get to the next level. Uh, I'm, I'm there to help you. If you need a little, little insight about what to do, I'm there to help you or whether guide you, whether it's individual coaching or teaching others to teach others uh, about get to the to the next step. So the thing is, um, you know, with my son and recruiting and everything, but just overall, I don't want people to go through the things that I had to do um, recruiting wise because they didn't work hard. You know, if something just didn't work out, it didn't work out. But I don't, I, 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 I don't want them to go back and look at life with regrets from a standpoint. They could have really been working hard. They could have put in the work. Now, there's no guarantee um, that, you know, doing certain things, you're going to get the, the Kentuckys or the uh, North Carolinas or the Alabama recruits and things. But the Bible says that all hard work leads to profit. That means whatever you do, you're going to gain something from it. You're going to profit from it. Uh, uh, just even just for, because the things that, that you, that you make worthwhile, the, those are the things you're not going to forget about. Those are the things that you're going to make sure you take care of. So I don't want kids to have to look back in their life with regrets. I'd rather you say, well, I gave my all if it didn't work out. So I have no regrets about that. You know, sort of like your son, he gave it his all, you know, I, I know that in his mind and I haven't met him, but I know in his mind, he's comfortable with his career at Northwestern because he put the work in. Could have been in Arkansas. Who knows? But I know he's comfortable with being in Northwest because he put that work in. And so for me, I, I, I wish I'd have put more work in. Uh, uh, but I, I do, I do, I don't want kids to go through what I've been through. So because I didn't get a chance to go overseas and play some basketball, could have been more if I had worked harder, you know, uh, on the early end. And then it also led to me doing some things academically. Uh, it didn't work out necessarily the way I wanted to athletically. But then when it came to getting degrees, when it came to uh, uh, being in class when it came to, hey, let's go out and party. No, I got this paper due. It, it transferred over to all areas of life. I tell kids, it's not just about going in the weight room, work for athletic things. It's about a work ethic mindset. So I was able to get some papers done because I worked hard in the weight room athletically. I know it doesn't translate to some people's mindset, but that's what it is. I, I remember, and I don't want to put him on the spot, Kelby Stuckey, uh, we did go out late one night and then I told him, man, hang out. I can help you do your paper in the morning. And uh, I had maybe about three hours of sleep. He came knocking on my, my, my door and say, hey, 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 train, you said you're going to help me. And my mindset of work, yeah, I did tell you that. So I was able to get up and we went and I helped him type the paper. Back then we didn't have the computers to type on. It was really <laughs> a real typewriter. So I couldn't make mistakes. And that's one of the things my, my mom t made me take home, ec home economics in high school and typing. And I'm glad she did because I got up to about 70 words a minute um, over five mistakes. So I helped them type the paper and you had that little corrective fluid you got to stick in there and everything. So if I didn't have that work mindset transferred from the athletic field to the to the classroom back and forth, it's just about putting in work. Then then I, I, I wouldn't have made it graduate. I wouldn't have been able because when I finished at Missouri State, I still had to do an um, a econ class. And so my work ethic said, well, I don't want to go back down to Missouri. So I was able to take some classes that uh, they take the class I need uh, back at home. And it came because the professor said, I like your work ethic. I'm going to sign off on this paper so that you can go ahead and take the class in Milwaukee and I had to come back down here. So those work ethic not only helps you out, but people see the work you put in. You say when you went into the algebra class, yeah, it, it's a you're not going into a classroom of 25 kids and, and sitting in desk row. You're going into a lecture hall. And so teachers not necessarily going and the professor not necessarily going to know you individually. You have to get a way to make yourself known. So I might not have had A's on all tests, but I, every single piece of my work was in. And then when we had to do group work, people didn't mind me. Even though we had a stigma about being an athlete, people didn't mind me working in a group because they knew I was going to at least, at the very least, bust my tail and work hard. You said if you put in the hard work, you said something about profit. When does that profit happen yes, when you put hard work in? Does it, does it happen immediately? 
I believe I believe it happens immediately because think about it now. As soon as you put that work in, like you said, the first person you want to play for is yourself. You can look into yourself and you can look yourself in the mirror and say, oh, yeah, I did that. I, I got better. For some people, doing one push-up is a lot of work. They've never done it before. Maybe a little overweight. Doing one push-up is a lot of work. For the next person, uh, doing 100 push-ups is a lot of work. Muhammad Ali said, someone asked Muhammad Ali, hey, how many push-ups can you do? He's like, well, I don't know. And, he, and they said, well, man, you you heavyweight champion of the world, world-class athlete. How do you not know how many push-ups you can do? He goes, oh, well, wait a minute. You count your push-ups from when you do the first one. He said, I don't start counting push-ups until I can't do anymore. <laughs> and when I can't do anymore, then I start counting. So maybe I can get eight in. Maybe I can do, get 10 in. So where some person says one push-up was work, 100 push-ups was work, Muhammad Ali said, I don't start counting until I can't do it anymore. So, yeah. Anytime, you, and, and, and that's a profit. So don't let nobody tell you that your one push-up is not worthwhile because that's you. You build into the second, to the third. So don't let nobody tell you need to be at this certain point. No, getting started. The first road to, to, to success is getting started. Put that left foot in front of the right foot. Do something. You don't have to be uh, have a 40-inch vertical the first time you hit the basketball court. You don't have to have a 100-mile-an-hour basketball to hit the first time you hit the baseball field. If you do something... Aaron, you said something about putting one foot forward. Are you do you still have your streak of, of walking like I like I heard on your last episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and again, that's that's just a matter of getting up doing something. Because some days we get you know so tied up and we do get busy uh, and everything. But if you do do something, uh, maybe it's not the uh, maybe it's not the four miles or five miles, uh, but you can do something. Maybe it's two or three miles of work or walking, or mix it up on a treadmill. Maybe it's a half mile running. Um, then with some with some push ups. So it's about doing something, you know. So I, I do. I, I'm up to I'm up to 10 days consecutively now because I used to go hit and miss up and down. And then I'm now I got to get in the mindset. It's going to be something that I do every day consistently until it gets to a point where it's no longer a sacrifice. It's my responsibility. And then, and then my body adapts to something. I just I just do it um, because uh, it it'll carry over to, to other things in life that I uh, well, you know, in the entrepreneur spirit, there are some things that you have to do, but you just forget about it. And then you go to bed like, oh, man, I should have, you know. So it's about getting that mindset of just being consistent until my body gets attuned to making it a habit for me. Well, and I just recently did a, a, a podcast about the best thing that you can do is start. You, you can have all these dreams, but if you don't ever start yes, your project, then, uh, then yes, you know, you, you, run, you run into trouble. So yep. uh, sometimes you just have to do that. Aaron, give the us start. It's the hardest thing that you have to do. It is. It is. And you yep. also mentioned earlier about the, some of the stuff that you teach uh, is is writing stuff down that your that your book uh, uh, is is interactive. Yes, sir. And uh, that's a hard thing for yes, people sir. to do because is it yes. hard because people don't want to be uh, tied down to that that commitment? Is that why it's so hard? Well, because now it holds you accountable for you not getting things done. It holds you accountable for you making excuses. You know. You know, uh, even reaching with students, well, my parents never went to school. My parents didn't like math or I'm from a single parent household or, you know, I, I, I hurt my I hurt my leg. I remember one time uh, in high school uh, when I decided to, to work hard my senior year, I broke my arm uh, and I started I was about to use that excuse. Why? Of course, I couldn't play in games. And then my, my coach said, well, don't, don't your legs work? You can still run. You can still get on, on, on the bike. You know, you can still. You know, treadmill is one big deal back then, but you, you can get on a treadmill. You can still go run in the pool. So there's always something you can do. And so it eliminates you coming up with excuses of you not being able to get something done. One last thing, and we'll let you go. Give us one or two pieces of entrepreneurial advice uh, that, that people can take, not, not only in athletics, but in school. And, and then as they start their business, because I always say college can set uh, is four years to set you up for the next 40 years. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Well, well my, my favorite quote is a quote by myself. My son fell off his bike and I was telling his mother fell off the bike. And he's trying to learn the bike without training wheels. And she said to him, well, perhaps he needs to keep the training wheels on until he learns to ride his bike without training wheels. And I'm like, well, you can't learn to ride a bike without training wheels, without taking the training wheels off. So <laughs> take those training wheels off. You, you, you're going to get some bumps, scrapes and, and, and bruises. If you're working out and you haven't, like, so my son working on ball handling. If he's working on ball handling and never turn the ball over, he's not himself. Uh, if you're pitching, if you're pitching and you never hit, had somebody hit a home run off of you, you, you're not working hard enough. It's just like somebody, you know, I've never been dunked on. Okay, because you never played against somebody that was better than you. If you do that, you're going to get dunked on. So, but the first the first road to success, the first road is you have to get somebody 
that's either been invested or done it before you. Uh, you have to run this through. Uh, we can Google things, whether it's a book, but you got to get around some somebody who's been, been invested going down the road that you're going down or or uh, have, have done it before uh, or, or have learned. Because the greatest thing you can do is learn not from the mistakes of yourself, but from the mistakes of others. So you have to get you a mentor. You have to get you a coach, whether it's a paid coach, whether it's somebody that, you know, you know from the neighborhood that's willing to support you. But and, and you have to get a coach, a mentor. And then the thing about this mentor or a thing about a friend, you have to get somebody that is not afraid to tell you no. That's not afraid to tell you, hey, you're not working hard enough. Hey, uh, that's not good enough. You have to get somebody that can look in your face and say that's not good enough and still be your friend and still talk to you. So because as much as we say it to ourselves, we're the last person that's going to tell ourselves no. You know, whether it's going for that extra ice cream or that candy bar or something, you have to get around somebody that's going to tell you the, the honest truth, uh, not necessarily about you character, wise, but you about where you want to go and the work that you put in and everything. So one, get those training wheels off. Two, get you a mentor, a coach. Everybody has to be coached. Serena Williams has a coach. Michael Jordan has a coach. Uh, Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. He had a coach. Not just team sport. Everybody has a coach to get to the next level. And third, Get around somebody that's not afraid to tell you no. I'm only here not because I was so great. I'm, I'm here because somebody finally told me no. Uh, quick story, because I wasn't playing a lot of Missouri State, I got a little depressed. I didn't realize then I started drinking too much. I didn't play because I didn't work hard, but I started drinking too much. My friend Caleb Davis, we were real tight. He was ready to beat me up and fight me because he's like, no, train, you're drinking too much. No, you need to stop, you know. You you not playing because you are not working hard. Don't put don't put it on others. Get your butt out the bottle. So that saved me. He was willing to fight me. As good as friends we are, he was willing to fight me. But because he told me no, I was able to go on and do some things from there. So that's one of the most important. Get somebody that's really tell you no and tell you the truth to your face. Caleb's still down here in the area. I need to look him up. He's still in the area. Well, I'll tell you what. It has been a great great opportunity to talk and tell tell everybody how they can get a hold of you. And, and, and again, what's some of the resources that you have again, and then we'll let you go to see your son practice. Oh, yes, indeed. So you can contact me at, at ourearlyllc.com. That's the words, A-N-H-O-U-R-E-A-R-L-Y-L-L-C.com. You can contact me on my email, A-Train, A-T-R-A-I-N, Womack, W-M-A-C-K-J-R, at yahoo.com. I'll get back to you. Uh, if you need motivation for your youngster or your school district, uh, for your teachers, for your staff, be sure to contact me. You can also get uh, uh, purchase my books through my website and ourearlyllc.com. The links are right there uh, to get yourself motivated, get your youngster motivated. Uh, if you've been thinking about doing the next step, whatever it is, going back to the grad school or even going back to get your GED, it's a book that's going to help you out get to the next level. So, but I appreciate this offer, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, again, when I looked at your episodes and I, 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 I got an over a year anniversary and I see you at episodes like 300 and something, I say, like, oh, I got to get going. I can't quit now. You know, so that's that's the motivation, too, because, you know, it's some days that you're tired, you don't feel like doing something. But when I look at, at Manage and say, OK, he's got over 300. I better put the work in now. <laughs> well, and I and actually I have just a little over 100. The gentleman before me had 200. And, and that's what motivated me, because he. He was able to put 200 in. I've got 100 in, and and uh, I enjoy giving 15 minutes that will uh, advance your athletic scholarship future uh, every week because I think little bit little nuggets like you say will help people. So, Aaron, I'll let you go, yep. and uh, yep. we'll uh, we'll uh, see if we can get together yes, again indeed. sometime soon. And I encourage everybody to go listen to an hour early podcast. For that's sure. uh, For that's sure. one of my weekly. Uh, podcast that i listen to now so so when you see when you see it coming in and, and there's one from missouri it. It. You, you know it's me <laughs> i know it's you okay well i appreciate that thanks a lot thank you for the opportunity and, and good luck to your boys all right and, and to your family too thanks aaron all right take care about it yes sir again a big thanks to aaron womack jr with an hour early llc and an hour early podcast whether it is recruiting schoolwork, a job search, or your actual job or family life, you need a plan. Aaron can help you with all those. Recruit Me will definitely help you on getting recruited, and it will help you to prepare for college and your life. Go to recruit-me.com to get the free recruiting power pack. 
And as you need more information, go to the Recruit Me 3.0 Athletic Scholarship System tab. For only $127, you get a full DIY recruiting plan. You can read, listen, and watch your way to an athletic scholarship. Check out all the links in this episode's notes. Links like the Recruit Me 3.0 system, the Recruiting Power Pack, the QR Recruiter Draft Tag, collegecoachesonline.com, and a link to all the Athletic Scholarship podcasts. There's also a link for a sign-up for the all-new Recruit Me newsletter and links to an Hour Early LLC.com and the Hour Early podcast. Join me next week for another 15 minutes that will change your athletic scholarship future. 